are used to being recorded constantly. Um, it's only internal, right? So, um, so willkommen alle. Ich freue mich, dass Sie alle da sind. Um, so, um, so Professor Hollihan posted something in the chat that has to do with making sure your addresses uh, get sent to her if, if, if you haven't already sent them to me. Um, so um, I see a lot of other students kind of jumping in, so that's awesome. Um, you want to make sure that you, uh, you get your addresses in either if you're on campus or off campus because you have the potential of receiving items of that will bring great joy and sweetness to your life. I know this chocolate looks very small, it is, but you know, there's others, you know, other little things that will go in the goodie bags, but you guys all recognize this. This is kind of like the departmental motto, like gummy bears. I mean, who does not love gummy bears? I know some people maybe don't love them, but anyway. And then you're also going to get a little Aufkleber um, for your computer. So a little departmental sticker that's being designed as we speak. Okay, so very exciting. Um, I just wanted to give you a little outline of what we're going to do. So I feel like I'm preaching to the choir because <laughs> most of you already know this information. But for those of you who don't, um, we're going to start off uh, just by um, introducing ourselves, uh, the department as it as it is right now. Um, and then we are, of course, here to celebrate the sophomores who have declared majors and minors in German. We're very excited. Yay! That's like the highlight of the day. Absolutely. And then um, I'm going to talk a little briefly about the major and minor and some upcoming classes, talk a little bit about study abroad, talk a little bit about a, a new kind of opportunity that's coming. Almost 99%. I guess I should I should make this, you know, pressing the thumbs, you know, the Daumen drücken for uh, for the German program in, in next year, a new program coming. I'll talk a little bit about the suite and then our guests, like the highlight of the day slash evening for them. And then I'm going to open the floor for questions from the students. OK, so you can all ask any questions you have. And so going back, I'm going to ask Professor Hollihan, who is with us this year, um, freshly minted PhD, freshly minted professor coming at, uh, to us from University of Michigan. She's going to introduce herself and and then we'll go on from there. Okay. Also, hello and welcome. Um, I'm Professor Hollihan. Um, I did my PhD, as Professor Milner said, at the University of Michigan. And my specialty was studying the history of hygiene in modern Germany. Um, specifically exhibitions for public health that would put the body up on display. And I've taught classes on crime and criminology. I taught last semester a class on the history of hygiene and moral panic, and we talked a little bit about coronavirus and how it's been dealt with in Germany. Uh, in addition to a couple of beginning German courses, first and second semester. Hello, Sarah. Sarah is in my second semester class. And this semester I'm teaching an advanced German course with Matthew and Allison and Kira on um, cultural history in modern Germany, I guess from about 1700 to the present day, um, in addition to the second semester course with Sarah. Yeah, so I'm excited to get to know um, all of you and to hear from our guests today. Okay. Thank you, Professor Hollihan. So um, I am Professor Mulder. Um, many of you know me. I'm happy to meet new students. I've been here for um, about 16 years, and um, I came from the University of Minnesota where I did my PhD, but I also spent uh, many years living abroad as well in Berlin. And um, as most of you know, I was there when the wall came down. That's like my claim to fame. It makes me feel really old, <laughs> but I was on that wall, man. Anyway, good stuff. So um, I'm, uh, you know, I teach all levels. I do all, uh, you know, language and culture and film and literature and um, very excited about classes that I'll be offering next year, which I'll talk about in a minute. But um, I also want to uh, um, give a little shout out to our uh, 
major this year, Sydney Barger, who is with us. He, she is uh, working um, really hard at her IS and doing a really fascinating um, topic, kind of exploring her own family history in Ohio, German family history in Ohio, and also exploring some of the sort of um, extreme um, German nationalist groups in the US. So she's doing really fascinating work this year. And in addition to doing her major in music, I have to say. So, you know, Worcester students never, um, never slouching through, you know, the, across the finish line, right? Um, and okay, so the next thing I want to do though is I want to introduce our declared sophomores. So when I say your name, of course, you can see all names on the, on the screens, right? But you can wave or do whatever you want or say something. Um, so our declared major this year is Matthew Monge. Matthew, woo, 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 okay. <laughs> very excited. So, and then we have um, our uh, sophomores, Jade Hoff has declared a minor. And Claire Berlin has declared a minor. And Caitlin Dennis has declared a minor. And Allison, I can see you. Oh, Catherine, Katie, you're in. I'm going to admit you. For some reason, um, Katie was like in the like, Maybe now you're I joined. I joined so that I can hopefully see people. OK, awesome, good. So Allison, I see you hiding in the corner. Um, you're also a declared minor, right? Yay, Allison. <laughs> okay. And then we also have Kira Wright here, who is minor, right? German minor. She's a senior. She's been doing a lot of work in German as well. Studied abroad last year. Tried to study abroad last year. <laughs> so um, so that's wonderful. And we also have um, some students. Taylor, for example, who is considering maybe uh, what she wants to do with German. So we're here to convince her. like. Do the major. <laughs> all right. So congratulations to all of you who have declared. This is like wonderful, wonderful news. Felicitacion. OK, so um, all right. Uh, let's see. I think um, most of you know uh, to talk about the um, the major. It's it's um, I mean, I'll just kind of give you a little overview. Uh, 11 courses for the major. You, of course, would do, um, you know, starts with 201, which is where, um, you know, many of you, um, you've already gone through that. 201, 202, 250, which is advanced German. 260, which is the course Professor Hollihan is teaching in the spring. Um, so those are kind of like the, the foundation courses. And then from there, you would take up to two to four literature or culture courses offered in German. Um, you take a, um, an elective either in the history department or we also offer courses in translation in um, the German department. And then of course, junior IS and senior IS. And um, I wanted to just uh, mention briefly the courses that are going to be offered next year, okay? So Professor Hamann is teaching an advanced uh, German course. This is 300 level on divided Germany. Um, that's going to be in the fall. And then in the spring, I'm going to be offering a course on um, uh, a cities course. So on Berlin and Vienna. And that's kind of going to be, a, a, that's going to be a course taught in English, but of course, it counts towards a German um, major. And for minors, now this is kind of interesting for you, you can potentially take that course if you do a component, um, an additional component in German, doing something to kind of like bump it up a little bit, because oftentimes, um, you know, we can only offer either um, like a th one 300 a year basically, and for the minor, you kind of have to do two of those upper level courses. And so that's one opportunity for you to do like another kind of 300 equivalent is to take one of these courses in translation and then to do like you would write an extra paper or something in German. OK, so that's an opportunity. And the the um, the course on Berlin and Vienna, the focus is going to kind of be like sort of 
urban studies, museum studies. I'm going to try to get them cross-listed with those um, disciplines and sort of a focus on um, a whole bunch of newer developments going on in those cities in terms of living, transportation, environmental practices, but also um, museum and memorial culture. So a lot of you know that obviously Berlin in particular was, you know, the the seat of the German government during the Holocaust and a lot of stuff, a lot of um, sort of historical memory is in the territory of Berlin. And so it's kind of um, going to be part of what we look at some of the sort of um, Holocaust memorials um, that have that have been under great debate over the past 25 years or so. So that's um, coming up next year. You know, we also have um, the theater course that is offered from time to time. And um, the theater, uh, the, the last uh, play we did was Besuch der Alten Dame. And um, Katie was uh, one of our leads in the first act. And so you can now go to our website under students projects and find those three acts of Besuch Dame on video and look at them and see the wonderful work of, of your peers who have performed plays in the past. And so we're hoping to do that in the next couple of years too. Not next year, primarily because of like COVID strangeness, just not knowing what's going on, but um, to make sure um, we're offering these other courses. And then the last thing I wanna say, and this will kind of segue into uh, study abroad, <clears throat> is um, we are at the cusp of having a new program approved by the faculty at the College of Worcester that is a TREK program, and it's called uh, TREK Sustainability and Green Living, Green Living in Germany. And this is a TREK program that is going to be a three-week-long visit to Germany accompanied by Professor Hermann, who is our other um, German professor, main German professor in the department who happens to be on leave this year, and Professor Susan Clayton in psychology. And that course is sort of geared at 102 students, so you have to have 102 to register for the class, but it doesn't mean that you can't take it at any other level if you're interested in this topic and you want to participate. Obviously, whatever level German you're at, you will just be able to participate at that level of German, right? It's a one credit course for three weeks, which to me sounds like a really good deal. Um, and it's going to be fascinating. They're going to start in Freiburg, which is like the green heart of Germany. And then they're going to go to Leipzig, to uh, Berlin, and then Lüneberg. Um, wait, yeah, um, Lübeck. At the, in the north, yeah. So, um, Allison, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to plan to study abroad next year. So when exactly is this happening? <laughs> so okay. this is big interest. Okay, that's awesome. That's a, a really good question. Um, and I was just talking to Matthew about this too. So study abroad, and that's the next thing I wanna talk about. Um, for those of you who don't quite know yet, study abroad, um, there is, um, so in German, we have programs in Munich through Wayne State University, uh, IES through uh, in, in Freiburg and Berlin, and through McAllister College in Vienna. So there's four different approved locations. That doesn't mean you couldn't possibly study somewhere else. It means, you know, kind of going through, jumping through some other hoops. But <clears throat> if you are at all interested in study abroad at any point of, you know, in your sort of four years here, what I want you to do is go to the off-campus study office and speak with someone. In particular, because of COVID, um, they are telling us that students who are interested in study abroad should definitely indicate that, that they're interested in study abroad. The deadline is March 1st. And so if you're at all remotely interested in studying abroad, you should definitely contact someone in, in that uh, department, in the you know office, Matthew, you were just there. It's in the library. Is anybody in the office actually? Did you go there? Yeah, I went there. There wasn't anybody there, but they have like the QR code that you can just, if you scan on your camera, then it'll bring you right to like meetings that you can schedule. 
Perfect. Awesome. So obviously that's for students who are on campus. If you're off campus, you know, just go to, it's, it's, it's in Apex. So you'd want to make an appointment and talk with someone, but just declaring your interest by March 1st isn't going to lock you into anything. Okay. And so we're kind of being, um, uh, encouraged to uh, sort of promote spring semester as a more solid um, option because of COVID. You know, fall students obviously study both fall and spring semesters abroad, but because of what's going on right now, um, you know, more likely than not, um, there will be a more successful uh, study abroad time. And so, Allison, to answer your question, um, the class, this trek will probably go after, you know, after the semester ends here, which will be, you know, mid-May. So I would say, I don't think the dates are like set in stone yet. I would say somewhere like end of May, beginning of June, which means if you're studying abroad, um, you would probably still be abroad. Okay. So the, the option to potentially tag along or even maybe meet up with that group at some point is there you'd have to see where you're at in your studies because the german semester goes has a little different calendar and you'd probably be right in the middle of your semester so but you know it doesn't mean you can't maybe hook up with the group on a weekend or something like that okay um okay so that's that um the other thing um, to keep in mind is uh, I just want to put a little um, plug in here for loose. That's another thing that a lot of German um, majors and minors like to do is live together in the language suites in loose. And the deadline for applying for that is February 17th. So you have a couple of days, but it's coming up next week. And um, we have applied for another Fulbright language assistant to live, you know, to come back. And actually the one who was supposed to come this year, but could not, is going to probably come next year. So that's in place. So we'll have that same situation. The only difference, though, is that the language assistants are not living in loose with you. They're going to be living in another house, but they will still be doing the same kinds of programming with students. And so when you live in the language suites, the idea is that man spricht Deutsch und Frau spricht Deutsch auch. Yeah? <laughs> okay, also, das ist das, you know, Ziel vom, vom Zusammenwohnen. Yeah? And um, our guests can probably speak a little bit to that because they um, both lived in Luce, if I'm not mistaken. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so if there's no immediate questions like right at this moment in time, I do see, okay, um, I'm going to move on to our guests. Any, any burning questions right now? Okay, so um, I will start with um, <laughs> age before beauty, <laughs> Jeffrey. I will ask you to speak first, okay? Jeffrey is a graduate of um, Worcester in 2015, and Katie is our more recent graduate, 2018. So Jeffrey, are you there? Hopefully he's there. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Very good. You have to be smart and unmute the... Um unmute the mic in order to speak you think as a graduate student you would learn that so learn that as an undergrad um katie and i have a little powerpoint which we can get to towards the end of the talk hopefully so um so we'll and we understand a good job for um i will start with first kind of my background where what i'm doing right now in austria so we'll start in the present and then go back to Worcester a little bit if that's cool um, I'm a naturally speaker, so if I talk too fast, do not feel bad to raise the hand and interrupt me or to tell me to slow down. I will try to be mindful of that. Um, so I'm currently working on a master's in gender studies at the University of Yale. Um, and how I got there two years ago or three years ago at this point, I uh, English native speaker, a English speaking native speaker assistant for um, Fulbright Austria. Um, was kind of 
bored with the America and bored with the uh, jobs that I had tried at the time. Um, and it was a truly life-changing experience. That's why I'm still here today. Um, and after two years, I fell in love with Vienna. I taught at two different schools, um, a technical school, a fashion school, and then a gymnasium. So a standard college preparatory high school, so to speak. And the big thing in Germany, you do Abitur. And Austria, you do Matura. So it's a big college entrance exam. So um, most of the time, I would work with uh, Matura students and have them practice for their exam. Um, so fell in love with Vienna, didn't want to leave. A, get a student visa, and I still figuring out what I want to do with the rest of forever. So I'm sure declaring a major that sounds very permanent and very frightening. So don't be afraid. It's a small thing. You can truly do anything with a Worcester degree. I'm living proof of that. Um, and that's what I'm doing at this moment. So go back in time a little bit. Professor Mulner was actually my arch advisor. So um, by that pure destiny, if I had not met her, if I had not been in her arch, I would have been a major. Background in Latin and Spanish in high school, very strong in um, foreign languages, math and science, not so much, not a STEM guy, still not a STEM guy. Um, and I was in higher level Spanish. I tested into 201. I still needed a fourth class. And she said, why not try German? You seem to like culture and languages. And that was history. Um, so the fact that the program, and I had no background in German whatsoever. The program is designed that you can come from a clean slate with no background, never knowing the words daddy das. And you can go from 100 to 450. That's kind of incredible that it's that hands-on, that the commitment to the education is that um, is that big. Um, and I also can think back of my time as a sophomore. Do I do I major in German? Do I not? Do I do art history? And I'm a crazy person. I think I went through maybe 10, 15 of the majors and read through all the guides. And these were courses you need. And German, it just, it, it always stuck. I always thought, I see myself doing something in a foreign language. It's a little frightening and underwhelming that... I don't have as strong of a background in this language. And I think there were a couple of times when I knocked on Professor Mulder and Professor Hedman's door as a sophomore. And um, there's this whole junior and senior. They would always say, you, you can do it. You're not ready yet, but you're going to go to Freiburg. And then you're going to really improve. And then you're going to come back. And the magic's kind of going to work. And that's exactly what happened. And also, um, I might be a little bit biased, but the German department is truly special. You're working with two to three professors. Um, I unfortunately only had one course with Professor Molnar, I believe, and mostly everything else with Professor Hermann. Um, and then Professor Figgy taught me Teatro Practicum, and then I had a Professor Jackson as a visiting assistant professor at the time. So to have that close-knit relationship and mentorship is truly, truly special. You know each other's quirks and, oh, I'm really struggling through this Yes, and yeah, you're you're gonna get there. So just to know each other, kind of extra support and extra hands-on approach. Um, and again, biased because I was a major. I didn't um, fight on anything because I had the goal to take every entry on um, foreign language class at Worcester. Didn't quite make it. Um, so it was just a true major, no minor, no double major or anything. So um, I'll let that marinate. If you have any questions. Awesome. <laughs> Vielen Dank erstmal. Das war sehr erleuchtend. <laughs> Super. Um, okay, und uh, jetzt gehen wir rüber zu Katie. Uh, Hallo. Du da bist du. Können Sie mir alle hören? Ich ja. weiß nicht, es ist ein Stück. Ja, okay. Ja. Mein WLAN ist nicht super. Uh, passt es, wenn ich auf Deutsch rede, ein bisschen? Für alle? Yeah, we have we have some second semester students, so maybe we can do English so everyone can understand if that's OK. Sounds good, of course. <laughs> All right, I'm Katie um, and I have been doing similar things to Jeff for the last couple of years. Um, I didn't have a time between Worcester and the Austria thing, though, so I went straight from graduating from Worcester uh, home for the summer and then right to Austria. 
Um, I was not a major. I was only a German minor. I majored in anthropology and minored in German and Spanish. And <laughs> despite all of the convincing from Professor Munda and Professor Hamann, <laughs> but I'm, I'm grateful that I, you know, uh, have a bunch of different things that I was working on. Um, and I went straight into the Fulbright Language Assistant program that Jeff also did. And I completed my first year in Eastern Austria, which it turns out is actually very flat. I was not aware of that beforehand. Um, so then my second year, I requested to be moved to uh, Western Austria, to Innsbruck, to Sport and Ski City, and I've been very happy there ever since. Um, and after completing a second year in the program, I decided I wanted to stay longer, and I'm now working on a master's degree in um, in Innsbruck at the University of Innsbruck. And uh, what else did I want to say? Yeah, <laughs> I still I'm here because I have very fond memories of the German department in Worcester. I also lived in Luce uh, for a couple of years, um, worked closely with several language assistants from Austria who I've actually now met up with in Austria, which was really fun. Um, and got to go hang out with a couple of them. And um, yeah, also I think something really telling is the fact that Jeff and I are like best friends now, even though we were three years apart at Worcester. We met, I think I went to his IS presentation and we met maybe at a couple of Stammtisch sessions in <laughs> or in the German suite at Cafe Stunde or something. Um, but we reconnected when I said I was also coming over to Austria and he had already been in Vienna for a while, and I literally met him in the middle of Vienna, and he showed me around Vienna, and now we, you know, have different people around the country and around Europe, honestly, that we can go and visit together, or that we know and we connect through. Um, we're able to help each other with literally everything from studying for finals to, <laughs> you know, figuring out visa applications and things. Um, there's all, yeah, through that Worcester connection. And we s still talk about, you know, German classes at Worcester, which is fun. Um, and I'm not sure if it's possible. We have some photos that we put together in a PowerPoint. I don't know if you can make us into presenters somehow that we can uh, share that. OK, um, you know, if can you see so who has the PowerPoint, you or Jeff? Okay. okay, can you see the um, the little box with the arrow? Yeah, it says only the um, meeting organizers and presenters can share, and I'm not one of them. Oh, really? Hmm, okay. Um, I can also send it to you if we want to start questions. We could do that after. Yeah, yeah, why don't you try sending it to me, um, okay. and I will, um, you're going to send it to me on email? Sure. Hopefully it won't be uh, too big. We so can. <laughs> I can I can upload it but um yeah so that's yeah so go ahead and send that to me and in the meantime does anybody have any questions for Katie or Jeffrey um I do actually um hi Katie I remember meeting you my freshman year so this is so cool um but I am also applying to the USTA Austria Fulbright program and of course we still haven't heard anything back but like I'd like to know what is that process like and how have you been able to learn better German especially for me who hasn't been able to study abroad due to being a double major? That's a good question. Um, I guess I'll throw out there as well that I also didn't study abroad but I have a worse excuse it was just because I played basketball. Um, that's so, not a Katie. Katie was like star basketball player, and she is now the coach for the, a women's team in Innsbruck. So, <laughs> you know, it comes um, in full, right? It's true. It is a fun way to make money now. Um, <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Uh, but I think that that's something that's that Jeff and I talk about a lot, um, and particularly being in Austria, where the dialects are sometimes absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, I went from day one going to some sort of local cultural festival thing 
and listening to a two hour presentation and thinking they spoke, they were speaking a different language. Um, like I didn't understand a single word to now going throughout Austria, I've been to every Bundesland and I am usually un able to understand all the different dialects, um, not in their entirety and I can't speak them by any means, but I can at least understand and communicate with everybody here um, in German, which is pretty exciting. Jeff? In slightly, not, I don't want to say opposites, but I am someone who studied abroad. I spent a semester in Freiburg, my, um, the fall of my junior year. Um, so that also really helped me fall in love with Europe, helped me fall in love with the German language again, and fall in love with the German language. Um, and I was a little bit nervous. Um, I also left out the small details. I worked in retail. I used to want to manage Louis Vuitton in Paris or in Berlin, and then went from that to, uh, sorry, Lauren and for coach for a couple of years. Um, then I became an insurance agent randomly through a connection for a year and the nine to five was nice. The work was not so nice. And that's also kind of what inspired me to apply to Fulbright Austria, see what happens. So true that the German major is very versatile. You can do anything with it. Um, same problems even after studying abroad. Um, not same problems, the same experiences. Yeah, that's the immigration office. Um, and you have to, you have a huge, it's a very important sheet it's called your Metatetl. Um, so it shows that you're a person living in the city. And you essentially take it everywhere if you buy a cell phone, if you open up a bank account, like your true life, kind of like your lifeline. Um, and I remember getting on Uban and a woman asked me something, and I'm like, that's not German. What did she say? Oh my God. And even the Uban announcements, I'm like, what, what, what is she saying? I can see that that's the street and that that's not what's coming out of her mouth. And a couple of weeks later, oh my God, I understand what she's saying. It was like the symphony in my head. It was just, oh, it, it clicked. I get it. So there's definitely moments when you kind of feel crazy. Like, what are they saying? I, I, I studied German for four years or yeah, I should know this. Um, but the, the dialects are real. Um, and to generalize a little bit, Austrians are a bit proud of their dialects compared to Germany. They want you to understand their dialect as opposed to speaking Hochdeutsch. Um, so it was a little interesting at first. It still is interesting. You said you can kind of walk around the city center and, oh, they're from Tirol. Oh, they're from Fraulberg. Uh, you absolutely know if they're from Fraulberg, pretty much a Schweizer Deutsch. Um, but it was a little That's intimidating right. at first, but you just kind of roll with the punches and have fun with it and if that makes sense hopefully yeah thank you so much can you give us um a great austrian word for a, a german word we'd be familiar with for fun sorry could you say that one more time yeah, I'm just looking for a fun, like, give us a great Austrian word that would be said slightly different in German, right? Just give us like a taste of that dialect or something fun, you know, from Austria, if you if you have something in your back pocket. <laughs> Don't they say? I mean, there are some really common ones. Or squirrel, um, right? Einhörnchen is a totally different sounding yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. We have like, Wachkatzel. Which is Eichhörnchen. Um, yeah, I can think of like the fact that instead of saying Gruß Gott here in Tirol, they say like Grüß and it's all this like back of the throat type sound. Um, and there's other ones where it's a completely different word, where Tomaten becomes Paradise or something like that. Danke. <laughs> Yes, those are those are fun things to learn. I think Jeffrey made a really good point, though. I wanted to just add about, <clears throat> you know, some of you who are currently in my 202 class, you know, we've learned all these words that are kind of like weird, sort of, you know, like das Amt, you know, the office. And it seems like, why do we need to learn all this weird bureaucratic speak? And Jeffrey, the, the, the mere fact that you mentioned you know, the Auslandsbehörde, where you have to go, or the Meldeamt, you know, where you have to go to like 
register with the police and this, the city your presence is like such a crucial experience that every foreigner, you know, um, if you're, uh, you know, a United States citizen, you don't know what it's like to deal with bureaucracy until you're a foreigner somewhere. And so this is a really interesting experience in, you know, otherness, right? Like you suddenly have to navigate this very complicated bureaucracy and you have to, you can't not do it because if you don't do it, you don't get your library um, pass, you don't get your university, you know, you can't do anything as a student, you don't get your, you know, subway card, all these things that suddenly are like super crucial for you to navigate. There is a method to the madness, just so you know, students currently in German classes, I'm not torturing you with this information. Am I right, Katie, Jeffrey? <laughs> You're so right. Oh my gosh. I I, completely. The amount of bureaucratic nonsense they make you go through here. You wish you had all of the vocabulary words to study. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to like, I, I did get the PowerPoint and I'm going to show it in a second, but I wanted to also, um, you know, kind of mention that, you know, we have um, uh, a lot of really awesome examples of what you can do with a German major. And this means that, you know, like here you have Katie and Jeffrey who were, you know, German major, German minor, um, doing really interesting things. Jeffrey jumping into the Fulbright program after graduation, like he didn't jump into it right away, you know? And so this is something that those of you now, um, you know, in classes should think about. Fulbright is a really great segue between studying and you know what you're going to do later either a job or continuing studying and so a lot of our students are able to do fulbrights abroad and um people apply to the german program the german fulbright so doing a fulbright in germany and also in austria those are two separate um application um sort of processes and so you should you know think about that as an option um a lot of our students have done that and so but I also want to mention that, um, you know, so, so, so several of those students who've done Fulbrights are still abroad. We have Naomi Milstein, who is in Berlin. She's currently working for a consulting company. Um, Adrian Redding, who was a BCMB and German double major, who is in Germany studying um, like international, I forget what she's studying exactly. Um, any, any of you guys know, Katie or Jeff? What Adrian study? I believe transnational studies. International studies? Transnational studies. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Um, so, you know, so those two students and Jeffrey and Katie are abroad. And then, um, you know, we have students who are, who have become lawyers or students who go on to work in museums. That's, there's actually quite a, a few who've done that. Um, and so, you know, having, you know, language skills are helpful in all areas. It's just one of the things I wanted to drive home. And if you have any other questions about, you know, alumni connections, we are now, we have a really great alumni website and we're starting to link current students with alumni, right? You know, more regularly. So like if you're interested in a certain area, you're interested in what someone has done, to be able to reach out to alumni is being made a lot easier now through sort of I think, you know, part of it is because of COVID. So, but the alumni network is, is really kind of um, a great resource to any of you have questions. So I'm gonna show you the PowerPoint, okay? Before our time runs out completely. And then students, if you have questions, still keep um, letting them, you know, marinate and don't be afraid to ask. Now I'm going to share my screen and I hope this works. Okay, I want to go to the slideshow. Um, okay, now I have to actually switch displays. There we go. And I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, so you guys can all see this. So I will let you narrate Jeffrey and Katie, whoever wants uh, to. All right. This is going to be interesting. I my screen my yeah Wi-Fi is not great and I can't actually see it, but I think I can do this. Um, 
those Worcester presentation skills you present without actually having the presentation. All right. Um, yeah, so we wanted to share some just uh, some photos. We went through photos, I think, for hours because there are so many cool things that we've done here in Austria. Um, uh, yeah, so this is my city. This is Innsbruck. <laughs> you can probably see from these photos why I'm really loving it. Um, can we go to the second slide? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Great. And yeah, just some more photos of the area around Tyrol, which is the state that um, Innsbruck's in. These are all places, this was all in the last year, places that I've been. Um, just really right around this area, you can just go everywhere with the train super easily. So I go hiking and I go skiing and go all over the place. Um, and then jump to the next slide and over to Jeff. So these are some pictures of Vienna or Wien. On the left is the Rathaus. Um, that's a very, for, for most of you know, that is the city hall. Um, a very important meeting point in Vienna. Every Christmas, there's a very big Weihnachtsmarkt, Christkindlmarkt. Um, unfortunately, not this year, for, or 2020 for various reasons. Um, and they also do a ice skating rink, which I think was actually allowed to be open this year. Um, for Pride, parade that starts at the Rat House every January, there's a big ball called the Blumen Ball, the Flower Ball. Students, it's much cheaper. If, if you have a, if you have a, if you're 26 or under, which I'm no longer, unfortunately, life is pretty easy. You can get a lot of good perks, a lot of good free things. Um, so the Rat House is a pretty, pretty happening place. And on the right, that is Kyle's Kirche from Kyle's Platz. Um, it's probably one of my favorite places in the city. So you can see that kind of the water in the bottom. Um, there's also a big Christmas market there. And it's peak the winter and throw a bunch of hay in and then throw their kids in the hay and you're drinking glue van, having a good time watching that happen. Um, but it's a very elegant, a very posh part of town. Um, the U-Bahn there is a major transit station. I think there's three lines that connect. So there's always something exciting happening about the cross paths. Uh, next slide, please. Yep. The Innenstadt, the first district. The left is Stefan's Dome, Stefan's Platz. Um, so that is the heart and soul of the city. Um, a fun fact, if you've ever had Meierstetten, the kind of chocolate Napoleon wafer, there's a deal with the cathedral and with the company if Stefan's Dome is featured on the packaging, then um, the church will donate a lot of money to the company. So um, fun little capitalist fact. On the right is Albertina Platz. Albertina, also not super far from Stefan's Platz. Um, I feel like I'm being a tour guide right now, so I apologize. Um, also, Fun trivia fact, the kind of most famous sausage stand in all of Vienna is around the corner. So, um, of course, there's Döner Kebab, which hopefully you will get to study abroad and experience. But what you have in Vienna is called a Käsekrena, which is a sausage that is used. So there's molten cheese inside the sausage. It's a pretty incredible experience. <laughs> On the subject of food. <laughs> Yeah, I felt the need to uh, throw that in there. So on the left, we've got Kaiserschmann, which is, yeah, I'm not sure if someone just messed up pancakes once. I feel like that's the real story behind this dish because it's just like pancakes that then got chopped up and fried again with more <laughs> sugar and, yeah, usually some fruit thrown on there. Um, in the middle, there's a uh, fun thing about mountain climbing and hiking in Austria is that there are restaurants on top of the mountains. Um which is a weird experience for me from a background of going backpacking and stuff in the mountains in the U.S. Here, you don't bring the food with you. The food's waiting at the top and the drinks and everything, and you can sleep there. So, yeah, this is a nice Käsespätzle up at a Hütte um, on a mountain after a hike. And on the right, I put this one in there because uh, Austrians are obsessed with um, pumpkin seed oil, and they put it in everything, including ice cream. And it's actually delicious, believe it or not. So it's kind of, it's a savory thing they throw into ice cream, um, and yeah, we can hop on to the next one. Okay. Um, so yeah, Christmas time in Austria is a very fun time, um, 
And yeah, I threw this photo in on the left because it's actually another uh, Worcester alum, recent Worcester alum, who is from Cyprus and came and met me in Vienna. We went to Christmas markets together. These Worcester connections, I'm telling you, you'll find them all over the place. Um, in the middle there, you can see uh, St. Nick is there along with the Christkind. So they have like the Christ child and they dress up and they go around the whole city. And then behind them is a Krampus, one of the scary monsters that I think Jeff is going to talk about. Um, but really like the old cities especially get all decorated and um, they become these really magical places at Christmas time. On the right hand side, there's a whole like lane in our old city in Innsbruck that's just for the giants, the Ries and Gasa, and they have these huge giant statues everywhere throughout the winter season. And Jeff, you can take the next one. Very good. So we kind of talked about the Chris Kimmel map there a couple times. In the middle, that is, of course, Krampus. And first introduced to Krampus in 101, I believe. And my um, German language assistant at the time, Annalena, she's also... Um, we're in touch, but haven't met up, unfortunately, due to COVID for quite a while. Um, she was telling us the story of Krampus, and that's day before Nikolaus Tag. So the 13th of December, I'm completely messing that up. Um, but the day before Nikolaus Tag um, is usually a Saturday. Um, the people will dress up as Krampus all over. It's it's sort of a thing in Vienna. But it's definitely the further west you go into the Alps. It's very Alpine. It's in um, Munich and Bavaria, all of Western Austria. So and they'll just call it a Krampus Lau. So it's basically a giant parade, and anyone can drink up. Usually. Um, crazy men that have had a couple of beers. A, almost a suburb of Vienna. It's about 40 minutes on the S-Bahn. That's where I had my orientation for Fulbright Austria. And there were kids at the first that got to, at the very beginning that got to dress up as Trump. And the joke or the tradition is if you're bad or if the Trump catches you, you get beat with a um, with a... So a friend of mine, she actually got beat a stick with a kid that was taller than her and younger than her um so we're, 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 what just happened is that real so you kind of laugh at that and then your austria friends oh yeah that's just krampus tog that's krampus knock that's what happens um it's a little bit of a dark mysterious side <laughs> christmas so to speak yes <laughs> i'll go to the next one yeah sounds good um so I had to throw this in here. I learned this summer how to make schnapps because that's a very Austrian thing to do. <laughs> so um, it's involved climbing a mountain to then climb trees to get these specific pine cones at a specific time of the summer and then bringing them down the mountain and, yeah, putting them in jars of alcohol with some other ingredients and learning how to make this really traditional Tyrolean pine cone schnapps, which is a good time. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. It's a very cool experience. Um, we can go to the next one. So, uh, Jeff, I'll take the May poll and you can do the other one. I'll <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah, this is another fun, just like cultural thing here uh, that I was really amused by the first year I was here, where on May Day, on May 1st, um, you'll see, especially in like the smaller uh, towns, you'll see these May polls go up um, all over the place. And the tradition there was originally that guys would bring these whole trees, really, to their sweetheart's house, and they'd put it on their lawn, basically, um, the, like the night before. And then in the towns, it is still a tradition that basically guys would go, like, run between different parts of town and try to, like, cut down the maples. And so there are these, like, weird competitions where <laughs> they're trying to have the tallest maple in the city or whatever or in their part of the town. Um, so some guys will, like, sleep outside all night under their maple to try to protect it and not let anyone chop their maple down. <laughs> um, and this still happens, especially, like, in the smaller towns in particular. This, this is something that still happens, it turns out, which I experienced, um, uh, which is just, like, a, yeah, very interesting sort of thing that you don't realize is still happening places. Jeff? Sure. And just 
super big to add to Katie, um, and it's still celebrated today. So basically, I don't want to say it's an excuse to drink, but it's a big it's a big parade. So the um, the mayor comes out. Sometimes there's a band. The department will help raise them. So it's, it, it really is a big deal. Today. It's still a big deal today. On the right, um, that is uh, um, the Regenbogen Parada or the Rainbow Parade in Vienna um, for Pride in June. And that was actually Euro Pride, um, which was super, super cool and my first Pride. Um, those are some colleagues from Fulbright 2018. That was the very first year um, that a Fulbright chapter ever participated in a Pride. Very proud that um, Fulbright Oscar was the chapter that was able to do that. So we'd like to brag about that. Um, and that's just a colleague that I taught with. And on the right, that is actually the um, USTA program officer, Dune Johnson. So he's a cool guy. He likes to have fun, if you can see. So. Uh -huh. Very cool. <laughs> All right. Um, Professor Muno, do we have to be done on the hour? We're not cut off. I mean, if students have to duck out, you guys, you know, do what you need to do. But we can finish up the presentation. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> um, it's very typical, isn't it? I've just put too many, too much work into this. All right. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I threw this, I put this one in here because on the left, this is a snow sculpture that I discovered up on the basically like home base mountain in Innsbruck. Um, like way up at the top, they every winter put up this huge igloo, other than now because of COVID. Um, and inside, they have these massive snow sculptures that people work on. And I found out that they're all actually the characters from some kind of like myth or legend that is based in Tyrol or in Innsbruck. Um, and they build these massive snow sculptures of the characters and then leave them up on the mountain all winter, which I thought was really cool. And the right-hand photo is just, this place is beautiful. I <laughs> had to throw that in there. Yeah, that's um, these photos are incredible. They're like from the catalog. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of friends who just asked me to please stop photo, please <laughs> stop uh, posting photos because they're just getting jealous sitting at home. Um, yeah. Well, you know, now when we're stuck at home, really, it's the only thing to do but to look at awesome photos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and the next uh, slide, that's again just more of to roll. Um, did a lot of hiking over the summer because you can, we were still allowed to at least go out in the mountains. Um, and the lake on the left, believe it or not, it's a beautiful sunny day and it was probably about 90 degrees, but the water was probably about 45 degrees. Um, it was like quick dive in and get right back out. Um, but that's what these mountain lakes are, which is amazing. Um, and then, yeah, on the right, just like it felt a lot like Sound of Music, but we would go and have picnics out in the hills. <laughs> um, we didn't do any singing and yodeling. That's not really a thing here. That's all kind of a lie, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Katie literally lives in a postcard, too. It's it's unbelievably beautiful. You just get off the train in Innsbruck, and you, those are the Alps. Those are real mountains. So the further <laughs> west you go, the mistake in yeah oh it's it's so true I have them right outside my window and honestly like even if we're in lockdown which we've been in a lot of lockdown recently I can still at least I can open my window and I'm looking out at the Alps so I can't complain too much <laughs> so we're looking now at, yeah go ahead Jeffrey sorry what are we looking at now? This is you in in front sorry, sorry. of the lock bridge, a lock bridge. In, in, in Salzburg. So the 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 big entrance Salzburg, that's the lock bridge. Okay. Um, on the bottom left, that's um, the fortress or the old ruins of the castle in Salzburg. And then on the top uh, top left, that um, Hauptstadt, um, which is I'm sure you've heard of it. Very very small. It's kind of just built on the side of a mountain. Very very touristy. Um, and I was lucky and fortunate enough to visit in June, um, June, July, and there's nobody there. So normally you take a ferry over from the train station and you have to wait to get into the village. It's just, it's traditionally very, very cluttered, clustered, um, so it kind of takes away from it a little bit, but due to the fact of COVID, um, it was kind of in its raw beauty again. And same thing with Vienna, you go to Schönbrunn and nobody's there. 
and that was really really weird to see at Christmas time and you go to any palace or any museum and nobody's outside so it's um sad but also kind of cool and that's the other thing about Austria too so COVID aside studying working aside Salzburg is about two and a half hours away from Vienna so you can literally hop on a train and be in a new city a new capital um just something that's so linguistically diverse and naturally diverse in a, in a matter of hours so that's really really incredible and if you're a student you also get a very very discount on the UBB which is the Austrian mill company mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, and our next couple of slides. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we have a habit of uh, castle storming because castles are cool and there are a lot of them. Um, so we try to visit them whenever we can, even if we're not going inside, I think it's really cool because I mean, yeah, it's not something we have in the States, but they really are everywhere here to the point where my Austrian friends make fun of me for wanting to go and see castles because for them it's just sort of everyday stuff. Um, so yeah, you can go on to the next slide as well. Also castle storming. Um, these are a couple that we claimed. And uh, <laughs> and then one more slide down um, shows the inside of some of these castles because sometimes they even invite us in for things like going to the ball. Um, yeah, ball season is a real thing in Austria. I thought it was a joke when the program, uh, the, the like Fulbright program told us to put a to pack a ball gown when we were moving over. And I very much thought it was a joke. And then I had to have my ball gown shipped because I didn't realize I needed it to go to balls. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a real thing. It would normally be about this time of year. It's like January, February-ish. And yeah, this one was in the, in the palace in Vienna. Um, but there are also ones all over Austria. And even in every, basically your last year of high school, so in gymnasium here, every class in their last year, they have their own ball. Um, so there are really these huge dances all through the winter everywhere. Like every weekend, normally you would find one in every city. Um, unfortunately, not this year. So we can go to the next one. I just want to interject, yeah. you know, the person in the middle of you two, Angela Malari, is also oh. a Muslim graduate. <laughs> Very true. I somehow, yeah, meant to say that. Um, yeah, Angelo was also in our program, was also a TA. He's back in the States now working on another degree. But um, yeah, we had a fun year with the three of us all together. And we were in all different, all in different cities and different states. But yeah, like Jeff said, the trains are so easy that <laughs> we would spend a lot of weekends together and we'd go to the ball together and things like that. That's awesome. <laughs> Whoops. So it is basically point. It's 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 a hard line. Um, this is also from Castle Storming on the left. Um, the Luxembourg Palace. That's actually very close to where um, Kaiser Franz Josef um, and Empress Elizabeth's son Rudolf the Crown Prince. We we were born in the summer before she had to teach before I started class. And we looked up, oh, we can take the S-Bahn to get to this random castle in like 45 minutes and it's two euro with our train passes. Um, so wow. that's on the left. On the right, um, That's um, there's a very, very cool day, which unfortunately, of course, was canceled this past year, um, called Wein van der Tag. And so Vienna and I believe Paris are two of the only capital cities in the world that actually are able to produce wine within Austrian culture. The beer's not bad too, but the wine's awesome. You can go to um, Lidl or you can go to Aldi, which we call Hofer in Austria, and get a bottle of wine for two or three euros. And as long as it has the red, white, red stamp on the top, you know it's going to be good wine, which is very, very convenient. Not so much the same in the States. <laughs> um, so this day, Wein van der Tag, um, you go kind of to the out in Vienna called Kullenberg. There's a lot of vineyards. So there's maybe, and you'll go and you'll get a glass of Zweigelt, that's the red wine, or a glass of Grunefeldina, that's the white grape. Um, and they also have Sturm, 
in October, which I don't really know how to describe it. It's kind of half fermented. It's slightly fizzy and slightly sweeter and very alcoholic. You don't know the alcohol content in it. Um, but the idea for this specific day, you go to five or six different stations and they stamp like a little passport and you sample all these different wines and then you get a pin when you go to all five locations. So it's just a really, really fun thing to do before the fall starts. That's also me again. So I mentioned one of the schools that I taught at was a fashion school. Um, I was able to teach at that school for two years in a row. So sometimes you stay at both of your schools, sometimes some, one of them. So this became my stand of the second year. Um, and they literally make their own clothes. It's also an art school, so they do their own part. Um, but they put on a literal fashion show in Vienna. And it's the coolest thing. These mainly women, some men, um, just sort of kind of like IS, but they put on a, they produce a fashion collection and kind of write a small high school thesis for them. So that was really, really, I've always liked fashion. So it was very special that I was randomly placed in that school in Vienna. And then on the right, those are my seniors from the same school. They invited me on a trip to London, which was super, super cool. Um, so that was before Easter a few years ago. So we spent a long three, four day weekend in London. We took a cheap and then the Globe Theater, so I'm teaching, reading in English. So you also make those kind of nice small connections with your school. And I'm sure Katie's had Katie been teaching in Innsbruck, they would have invited her to go skiing, for example. Yeah, yeah speaking of skiing, um, I unfortunately, well, I don't know if I should say, I don't know if I should say, unfortunately, but um, I did not go skiing with my school, but I did hear a lot of stories about how it's not fun to go skiing with your uh, students. <laughs> so I'm not totally sad about that because it means a full week with your students in the mountains and there's no escape and you have to teach them how to ski. So I was all right with skipping that part of the <laughs> teaching process. Um, but I do go skiing a lot. Uh, yeah, at the moment it's a little sketchy because we're on lockdown, but skiing is open because that's Austrian culture. Um, so <laughs> for a very long time now, the, the slopes have been open, but the stores have been closed um, other than like grocery stores. Uh, but anyway, it's super easy. I can be on top of a mountain in about half an hour here. Um, so lots of really cool skiing. Yeah, they also have like tickets for people actually living in Tyrol and it's ridiculously inexpensive. It's about the price of going skiing in like Colorado for a week and you get a full year's pass and it's for like all of the mountains and in Tyrol, and in addition to all of the pools and all these other free time things. Um, on the right-hand side is, um, I couldn't find many photos of it, but a bunch of U.S. teaching assistants um, from all over the U.S. who were in this program, and we were out having a picnic and grilling up on the side of the mountain again. Um, but yeah, you end up in this program with a really cool sort of community. So. Not only do I have my Worcester people in Austria, I also have these other teaching assistants. And then I've, yeah, uh, we can go to the next one. Next slide. Also have basketball people. So I played basketball at Worcester and then was able to bring that to Austria. And I played Austria in Austria. Um, it was a really cool experience to be able to say, like, we beat Vienna. Um, <laughs> you know, it's not something you hear every day. <laughs> um, and, and since basketball is not a really big popular thing in Austria. Um, it's pretty new, especially with women's basketball. So I've had the opportunity to coach the women's team now um, in Innsbruck, which normally in the U.S. I wouldn't be able to coach like a women's basketball team probably. But um, with my experience of, you know, playing for Worcester, it's like pretty high level of experience um, compared to some of, to most of basketball in Austria. Um, so that's been a really fun way to meet people um, and, yeah, keep active. And I think that's the end of our presentation. Yes. Sorry that I went so long. Wow. <laughs> that, was, that was awesome. So great. So, Katie, just a quick question. You're teaching, you're, you're coaching for the, like, Innsbruck City team or what? Yeah, it's a little confusing how they do it here. Um, everything is in clubs. So um, uh -huh. I'm coaching the only like 
competitive women's club team. It's Zweite Bundesliga. So we play in all of the Bundesstädte. And it's not the like number. It's not the first league. So it's only the second league. Um, okay. But it's the only one that Innsbruck has. So all of the basketballers who are in Innsbruck are pretty much on my team. <laughs> Very cool. That's so great. Super. Okay, so... Wow, I can I guess you know all I can say, people, is if this slideshow hasn't convinced you that German language study and culture is the bomb, I don't know what else possibly could. <laughs> Thank you, both of you, for putting that incredible show together. Very, very cool to get a glimpse of all the amazing things you're doing. So, students, does anybody have any like last minute question or you want to ask something? of our guests or of Professor Hollihan or myself. Of course, you know where to find us. Sydney, go ahead. Sorry, I I love Austria. It looks so cool. Um, I did want to ask, how did you find your master's programs in Austria? Because I feel like being a TA and applying to a program might be like a confusing sort of thing to do. Yeah, um, that's a good question. So. I personally knew that I wanted to stay in Innsbruck and therefore I was looking at University of Innsbruck for programs that were um, of interest to me. I'm, I'm in a program for uh, European ethnology, which is basically cultural anthropology, um, which, which fit in really well with my bachelor's degree and what I was interested in. Um, so for me, that was pretty straightforward finding the program. Um, but again, there are, of course, other universities around Austria. So if you're more set on that you want a specific program, then you can just a, a quick Google search. You can find the programs pretty easily online. Um, in terms of applying for them, e I would definitely recommend that you do that earlier rather than later. If you know you want to study in Austria, um, I waited until I was pretty much done with my uh, with the language assistant program, and I ended up having this stressful summer where I <laughs> didn't know if I was going to be accepted because of the whole bureaucracy and everything, it just takes a long time for them to sometimes process paperwork. So I ended up just sort of like being in between things all summer um, because you have to be a student to get a work visa, so it couldn't work. And then, um, yeah, but if, if I had done that like a semester earlier, I hadn't decided at that point, but if I had decided a semester earlier, I could have sort of studied um, at the same time that I was doing the program. I mean, it would have made the transition a bit easier. So just sort of being on top of that, if possible, makes it an easier transition. But in general, it's not it's not super hard to find programs and things. So I'm sure that, you know, I, I mean, I, you know, I uh, when I went to the university in, in Berlin, that was an eons ago. The process was very different. I keep telling students it doesn't cost anything. So. You know, I mean, or it's, you know, comparatively, it doesn't cost anything, right? That's super true. Yeah, I'm paying 750 euro a semester and my yeah colleagues here think it's crazy that I'm paying so much um, because they pay like 20 euro a semester. But as a student from the U.S., you pay yeah around 750 a semester, which is obviously compared to Worcester is nothing. <laughs> yeah, good. OK, it's well, a group, yeah. go ahead, Jeffrey. What? It's, it's essentially free compared to what graduate school in the States would cost. So. Yeah, yeah. So, that, I mean, and that's interesting because, like, right now, currently, um, you know, the 202 students uh, know um, Handel Son from South Korea, who's a College of Worcester, you know, student who's graduating actually this year. And he is applying to engineering school in Germany. And he's in the process of applying right now. And so that's one of the things that. You know, I do talk to students about a lot, and I'm glad to see some students have taken me up on my advice about, you know, what German, another thing that's good about keeping your German fresh and good, even if you're not able to major, is study abroad. Like, you can study whatever your subject is in Germany or Austria, um, likely also Switzerland. I'm not really quite sure. I'm not as familiar with like Basel or some of the German speaking universities there, but um, Zurich, you know, talk about dialects, that's a whole other ballgame. Um, but 
you know, that's always an option and there are ways to make it happen. So, um, you know, so just something to think about, you know. OK, I don't want to keep you all from your um, lazy Saturdays. I'm so happy that you all uh, had an opportunity to join us and to see this great presentation. Thank you so much to Katie and Jeffrey for sharing your experiences with us. And if any of you have further questions for either of them, I'm happy to be the middle person um, to, you know, give, you know, make that happen. You know, Worcester, like, like, like Jeffrey and Katie said, you guys are in one magical club together forever, uh, being Worcester students and eventually alumni, right? You know, and it's also weird. I'm not a Worcester alumni, but being a professor, I meet people all over who are like, oh my God, Worcester, yes, you know, I went there, my grandfather went there, blah, 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 whatever, you know, so it's a big, small school. So that's a very cool thing. Um, yeah, thanks again. Vielen, vielen Dank, das war ausgezeichnet. Super, super interessant. Und um, ohne weiteres, dann können wir das alles beenden für heute. Vielen Dank. War super yeah, gut. Gerne. Thanks for the Hello. invite. Thanks for joining us. Okay, Studenten, schönen, schönes Wochenende noch. Tschüss. Danke. Danke. Tschüss. 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 Tschüss.